Kave, I think you're on mute, sorry. Gareth, sorry. Um, hiya. First of all, thank you very much for your time. Um, Belgium, uh, obviously the number one ranked country in the world and have been for two years. I mean, it's a relatively small country. I think the population is only 11 million. Um, is there anything English football can learn from Belgium? Well, I think um, for a long period of time, we've studied um, development of young players in lots of countries. So Belgium have had an amazing crop um, over the last 10 years and they did lots of things developing late developers, for example, so smaller kids who, who maybe weren't getting a game, who, who were considered um, lesser. They ran twin, tra twin track programs with their junior national teams. Um, and you'd have to say they have developed some outstanding players. Um, but that's very similar to Denmark, to Holland, you know, three small countries there who have over the years produced some phenomenally talented players and um, have maybe had a different culture to us in terms of skill development and the emphasis on it. I think that's changing with our academies and with our youth football. You know, when I travel around and watch youth football on local parks, um, there's a much higher emphasis on skill and um, a, a very different outlook on, on the game, which is brilliant because we need that to develop top professional players. We saw uh, Jaden Sancho training this morning. Uh, as far as you're concerned, um, is it a clean slate now or, or has he jeopardised his chances of being in the starting 11 tomorrow? No, Tammy and Jaden both trained this morning. Um, so everybody is available. Everybody trained this morning. Um, they've obviously missed a, a bit of training. So that's that's a bit of a concern in terms of uh, their load through the week. But um, no, it, it's done. You know, that, that situation is done. They're back with the group and uh, we move forward. And what's the latest on Ben Chilwell? Are we expecting to see him back being involved maybe against Denmark? So Ben will be tested today and we'll have to wait for the results of that tomorrow and then we can make a decision from there medically on that. As far as Marcus Rashford uh, is concerned, obviously we all heard the news last night that he'd been awarded the MBE. How much of a role model do you think he is now, both on and off the pitch? Well, firstly, it's an amazing achievement. Um, not only, I mean, wonderful for him and his family, the, the recognition, um, but he didn't start this project to get the recognition. He started it because it was something that he had been affected by, that he cared passionately about. And for somebody of his age to be able to make the difference that he has is a phenomenal achievement. So we're all very proud of him. We gave him a... a, a a special round of applause this morning because I think as a, as a group we're very close we've watched him grow I'm saying grow up but he's still 22 so um, yeah it, it, you, you can only um, uh, marvel at what, what he's achieved really and the difference he's made to kids who will understand the difference he's made but also who at the moment won't understand but will be incredibly grateful for him in years to come. As far as Jack Grealish is concerned. Um, obviously, there's a lot of attention on him now at the moment, uh, a lot of hype surrounding him. Is part of your job to protect him from all that, especially when he's on England duty? Oh, I think I think he should enjoy it. You know, he, he had an excellent performance the other night. Um, and, you know, when you when you make your England debut at Wembley, it's a, a, an occasion to to cherish and to to remember fondly. So um, he's not a, he's not an 18, 19 year old Jack. You know he's he's a more experienced player than that. So he's used to um, accolades, especially for, from his own s supporters. But I think he's highly thought of within the game, and um, he'll be hungry to back up um, the performance the other night and um, to continue to show people what he's capable of. There were some comparisons between him and Paul Gascoigne uh, today. 
do you think it's it's a bit dangerous to make those comparisons at this stage of his career? Well, I, I'm very conscious that um, you know I, I don't I don't want to be dampening the enthusiasm for Jack. Um, you know, I've, I've answered honestly. I always answer honestly about people, and when you're talking about Gascoigne, there's not a player in English history that was at that level, in my opinion. So, um, but I, that, that, I don't want that to seem as a criticism of Jack. Um, I just feel that Gascoigne, I played with, I played with Scholes, who was phenomenal, Rooney, who was phenomenal, Gerard, who was phenomenal, Beckham, who was phenomenal. Um, you could go on, amazing attacking players who won Champions Leagues, who, Got, went on to 100 caps with England, who broke goal scoring records. So, you know, in, in many ways, um, I just feel Gascoigne is so unique um, and was such a, an incredible player. It's a bit like talking about Bobby Moore. You know, it, 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 I think what we have to say is that I, I think young players that come through, you, you shouldn't burden them with tagging them and comparing them to somebody else. They're unique. Their own talents are unique. Um, and Jack has a style that is different to all of those players I've mentioned and all of the other players in our current squad. So um, I, I thought he handled that question really well the other day, very maturely. Um, and I, I kind of understood some of the comparison. Um, but I just think with Gascoigne as an individual, it's it, it, it was just on another level to, to anything I played with. And just a couple of questions for Eric. Um, Eric, obviously um, back at the World Cup in 2018, uh, when you scored that penalty against Colombia, you were almost a national hero. Uh, and since almost, then, no, mate. <laughs> what have you got to do? <laughs> you were a national hero. I mean, si since then, um, obviously, you know, every career has its ups and downs, but you were kind of out of the picture as far as England were concerned. How tough has it been to get back to this level and what does it feel like to be back? Yeah, it's been um, it's been a bit of a journey since then. Um, I was, uh, yeah, yeah, you can't you can't get much higher really than the feeling at that World Cup. And then from there, I went through some difficult times, mainly mainly with my health and that um, that put a put, put put me in a very difficult position for a while, but um, I, I, yeah, I've been working very hard to try and get back to to where I was at that moment, and and, and um, you know the feeling in the last camp being back here and 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 getting the call again this time has been even more special because of that that I went through last season. And through the difficult times. Uh, how much did you get? How much support did you get from Gareth? Was he still in touch with you? Yeah, I got a fantastic amount of support um, from Gareth, from from uh, you know, from people, my family, uh, other players from who I know from the England squads and um, and within my team as well. So I had a, I was very lucky to have a fantastic support base, um, you know, and, and I'm always grateful for the support Gareth has given me, even with my um, you know, incident with the FA as well. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful for that and been very lucky to be supported by many great people in different areas. And tomorrow you could come up against Romelo Lukaku. We've all seen, uh, you know, how many goals he scored for Inter Milan. What's he like to play against? Yeah, he's... Uh... He's a fantastic striker, one of the, I think, you know, one of the best in the world. His record is fantastic. And for me, it's always a, it's always a pleasure to be able to challenge myself against, against um, you know, the, the, the best. And, and I, I definitely see him in that category. I was, uh, I was lucky enough to play against him quite a few times when he was in the Premier League. And um, so I, I know him quite well from those times. And, and uh, it's a very, very difficult challenge, but one that I'm, I'm really looking forward to. Thank you very much. Thanks, Carvey. Thanks, Carvey. Next, we'll go to Nizar Kinsella from Goal.com. 
Hi, Gareth. Um, yeah, just one about uh, Reese James. He made his debut and we've, we've not really spoken about him. I just wanted to see how he integrated into the squad, what you thought of his debut, and also a bit about the right-back situation. Just, you know, you have a lot of right-backs and uh, you sort of the battle for places there. Yeah, well, he, he's... Um, I thought he did really well, I have to say. Uh, you're quite right. There were so many debuts and so many good performances that... Um, it was difficult to speak about everybody, but um, I thought he um, used the ball uh, very, um, very calmly. Um, he's got great uh, quality in the final third of the pitch as well. Um, he was very strong in his defensive work. Um, so I thought he really uh, uh, gave a very mature performance for half an hour. He didn't look out of place at all. And we know he's a player that, we like and is on the fringes of our thinking. Um, you're right, he's in a position on the pitch where there's probably as much competition for places in terms of players playing at Champions League level, never mind uh, Premier League level. So we're, we're really blessed in this country in terms of right backs. Um, but um, yeah, he's right in that mix. And we had thought about just bringing him in for that first game and then him perhaps going back with the under 21s. But um, given the way things have panned out, we think it's important for him to stay with us. And um, he's, he's performed well in training and we're really pleased with him. Thanks, Nizar. Next, we'll go to Simon Collins from the Evening Standard. Hi, Gareth. Uh, we've seen um, quite a concerted push this week in terms of getting fans back into stadiums. I think the petition online's near 200,000. Um, our papers started a campaign. We've had clubs pushing hard. I just wanted to get your views on the current situation regarding getting fans back into grounds. Well, I think the other night was um, a classic example of why we miss it so much to have so many lads making their England debut and some of them scoring their first goal. Um, and playing at Wembley in front of nobody is is such a such a shame for them not not to be able to share those moments and um, th they're moments that live with you forever. So we know what it would mean for the game. We know that we don't have a game without fans. Really, you know that interaction, the atmosphere, the level of performance that I think goes even higher when when fans are in the stadium. So we're all hoping that that can happen as quickly as possible. Equally, we understand how complicated a decision that is. You know, I don't envy the government with trying to deal with the complexities of the virus, you know, to walk into the office every day and have those sorts of um, complicated decisions to make uh, across so many industries, across so many aspects of life is, is incredibly difficult. So, I don't think it's for me to add. I've said before, I don't want to add to their worries. If they can leave us alone when we're picking the team, that, that would be great as well. So um, uh, football will try to push its case and will, I'm sure, feel that it can um, bring fans back safely. Um, but we, we have to accept that we're also trying to combat a, a, a very dangerous virus. Thank you, Simon. A reminder to everybody to feel free to raise your hand or post a message if you do have a question. Otherwise, we'll briefly return to Carve Solicol at Sky Sports News. Uh, Gareth, I was just going to ask you about um, the back three. The last time you played Belgium at the World Cup, obviously in those two games, there wasn't that much at stake. Um, in the first game, which you lost 1-0, your back three was Phil Jones, John Stones and Gary Cahill. And just two years later, none of those players are in your squad. Does that just show how quickly things can change at this level? Well, two years is a long time. And of course, all of those guys have had different sorts of situations. I mean, you spoke with Eric earlier about, you know, his injuries and, and illness that kept him out for a period of time. And Phil has had that situation as well. Um, and of course, Gary re retired from international football at the end of that tournament. So there's, you know, the squads are always evolving. Um, we have got a really strong core group within within our team, a lot of whom were involved in those games and um, a lot of whom have that experience of the World Cup behind them. And 
you know, they really drive the, the, the team and the motivation within our squad. Um, they're the ones who have racked up some consistent results over the last four years and who are more driven than ever to go and win and to achieve things. I, I think sometimes when you're a younger player, you're trying to establish yourself in the squad or establish yourself in the team. And it's the players that have been here for longer for whom, you know, that's not enough now. They want to go and win and they want to be part of a winning team. So um, that's why experience is so, so important to have in our group. And just finally, uh, from me, a question for tomorrow. Uh, on Sunday, Kick It Out are launching their new Take a Stand campaign to tackle racism. Uh, the FA are behind the scheme uh, as well. How important is it that everybody does whatever they can to tackle the problem of racism in football and in society? Well, it, it's, it's hugely important. I think we have you know, probably never had the platform that ex has existed over the last four or five months to try to make change. Um, but in reality, the only way to do that is for everybody to play their part and to try and affect their own areas, to try and help the education of each other, to help make a difference in their, in their area of society. And we, we've got to all continue to do that. Um, I, I just hope with, with every initiative that it doesn't just become an initiative, there's got to be action and um, is the same with what we're doing within the FA. You know, it's not, it won't be good enough just to have focus groups and um, committees, we, we've got to make sure that we make change as well. So I'm, all, I'm fully supportive of what Kick It Out are doing. I think it's an important message and I think it's absolutely right that they're asking everybody to take responsibility and help to make a difference. Thank you. Okay, then we'll conclude the conference there. Thanks for joining us today.